Hi everyone, this is Gordon again and in today's video I will talk about things that you could do if you graduate from law school and you don't have a training contract or privilege. Most of us will hope that in our second year of law school we secure a vacation scheme offer or training contract offer so that before we even graduate from college we already have a secure job offer. That would be the most ideal scenario for most of the law students on this planet. But the reality is it rarely happens. Probably the minority, 5 or 10% of people who could possibly do that before they even graduate. Let's be real here. This is super scary, I'm gonna tell you, because I remember when I graduated from my master's degree, I was so confused. I didn't have a job offer. I still need to rely on my family to support my living in the UK. When you pursue a training contract or a vacation scheme, you don't exactly know when you will ever get that one offer that you want in your life and you don't know what your future holds. Today's video, I'm going to tell you my, from my personal experience what you could possibly do if you graduate from college without a job offer because I experienced the same. Those things work for me. It doesn't necessarily work for you, but I think it's good to hear some people's stories and experience so that you can determine which particular path will suit you in the future for your career. So I hope you guys stay tuned and check out all my tips or my, the things that I recommend you to do. The first thing you could do after law school is LLM. Let's be real here. I, I can't imagine how many of you guys or how many people, law students after graduation, they want to pursue an LLM purely for the reason that they haven't secured a training contract and they find that it's a good escape from the real world. They want to gain that one extra year to figure out what they're gonna do with their life. Well, personally speaking, I think an LLM could be a good option, but it depends on your motive for doing that. For example, if your only motive is to find one year to escape from the real world, I don't think that's a good idea. You need to have a clear vision and also a clear specific interest in a specific area of law. First of all, a general LLM will not be helpful to your career in most circumstances. From my personal point of view, the LLM you choose to study should be as niche as possible, as specific as possible. A LLM degree will only be helpful in your training contract application if it can demonstrate your interest in the very specific area of law and demonstrate your passion for that area of law. Potentially, your interest in that LLM degree aligns with your interest in the firm's particular practice area strength. For example, in my previous video, I mentioned that I went to an open day at, for example, HFW, and they are a specialist in shipping law. And I actually met trainees who study a master's degree in that area before joining the firm. In that case, a master's degree would definitely be useful because it helps you tell a compelling story why you want to join the firm. Additionally, some people may be interested in more niche area, for example, uh, international property law then it's good for you to actually do a master's degree in this area that may help your application as well. And in the past, when I did my paralegal work, I also met some of the aspiring barristers or people who actually secured a privilege uh, at some chambers in the UK. I knew that many of them actually did a master's degree in international human rights in Netherlands. Bear in mind that not too many people will be impressed by the pure fact that you do a master's degree in law. But the fact that you do a master's degree in a specific area of law can help you tell a good story about why you want to join a particular firm, maybe because of your interest in that area. And the second reason why a LLM will actually help you get the training contract offer or job offer is you actually do a master's degree at a top university in UK or in anywhere else in the world. The fact that you get into a prestigious university would to a certain extent help with your application. I'm not trying to uh, emphasize that how a good university will definitely guarantee you a job, but I just want to tell you the reality that based on statistics, if you graduate from a certain top university, your chance of getting a training contract will indeed be a bit harder. For example, if you get a LLM at Osbridge, I think it will help to a certain extent, at least with regard to the application stage of the training contract applications. In the past, there was a study showing that while Osbridge makes up for less than 1% of each year's graduating class, they actually make up over 15% of all the trainee lawyers in the field. Well, Although there is also some uh, contrary example, for example, I went to an open day at Sermon and Sterling. 
HR actually told us that a master's degree even in Oxford may not necessarily increase the chance of an applicant getting through to the next stage. Unless your reason for studying the LLM falls within either of the two reasons I list above, I don't think a general LLM degree will help you a lot with your training contract application in the future even though you get a distinction for that degree. A distinction in a LLM degree will not necessarily compensate for 2-2 degree in your undergraduate uh, law course. So I do think that you need to think very carefully. It's a huge commitment both financially and also you need to spend a lot of time, a whole year on a course and you gotta find something that you're really interested in. The second thing you may do if you graduate from law school but you still don't have a training contract is to try to look for international internship opportunities or experiences. The reason why I say that is most international law firms, they have a really good international presence and nowadays they emphasize a lot on diversity and inclusion and also the internationality of their trainees. And many law firms like international people, uh, not only international in the sense that you are you were born and raised in a different country, but you need to be international in the sense that you actually work well with diverse people. If you can afford it, I definitely recommend you to seek out other international opportunities. Considering that most of the people in the UK, if they don't get a training contract, they will pursue the normal paralegal route. I did a lot of research on this area when I didn't get my training contract and I wanted to seek international opportunities. Actually, there's so many organizations you can reach out to or apply to if you want those experiences. For example, organizations like the WTO, uh, World Trade Organization, also the European Commission, and also the Court of the Justice of European Unions. They all offered paid internships open to any candidates all over the world. You could actually undertake traineeships or internships in those organizations ranging from three to six months period of time and you actually get paid for that. Apart from that, you can also undertake unpaid internship if you can afford it, of course. For example, uh, the International Court of Justice and also United Nations. There are so many job opportunities or internships they offer to international people. This is particularly helpful for candidates who already has an international background so that you can add that extra layer of international experience to your CV so that you can pitch to the firm that you are a kind of candidates who has a global mindset and also have the ability to actually get along well with diverse people from different backgrounds, which is exactly what law firms are looking for for their trainees. When I didn't get my training contract, I went to Italy. Uh, I worked uh, for two months, uh, two to three months at an intergovernmental organization called Unidra. And during that period of time, I actually worked on the drafting of a commercial treaty on asset finance and I met different people all over the world and it was a very good experience for me and it also helped with my CV because I am an international candidate and uh, I always know that internationality is uh, one of my uh, biggest strengths. So I think uh, doing an internship in an overseas setting would definitely help me secure a training contract at a diverse law firm, for example, Baker McKenzie, because they take a lot of different diverse and international people from all over the world. You need to do it in a very strategic way. You need to know why you want to undertake that particular internship and how you can actually pitch that experience in the future in your application form so that it may potentially land you a job that you want. The third thing you may do if you graduate from law school but you don't have a training contract is the New York Bar exam. Well, personally, I also experienced that because uh, before I got my training contract, I already decided to take the New York Bar examination. As some of you guys may not know, the United States is a bit weird in the sense that some foreigners can actually take the bar exam there, even though they haven't done a law degree in the United States. But not all states will allow foreign candidates to sit for their bar exam. A few states allow them to do so. There are two states that I need to mention here. One is New York, another is California. But usually California only allows foreign qualified lawyers to take their bar exam. But New York is different. New York actually allows foreign educated candidates to sit for their New York bar examination. If you have done a law degree in a common law country for three or four years, which is duration only substantially equivalent 
to a JD or law degree in the US. That's why New York becomes a popular destination for so many aspiring lawyers. If you are from civil law countries, usually you need to do a master's degree in the States, which would be costly. So that I don't really recommend you doing that unless you have a really a strong ambition to actually be a New York qualified lawyer in the future. For most people in the UK, you basically are eligible to take the New York bar exam if you do your LLB. Is it actually helpful to your training contract application? The truth is that you shouldn't think that New York bar exam is a game changer because I personally know uh, quite a number of New York qualified lawyers who still get stuck in paralegal roles despite having the New York qualification. And also it takes time, energy, and also a lot of efforts to pass the New York bar exam. Considering that the passing rate for foreign educated candidates in the New York bar exam is roughly 40%. So it's a really difficult exam. However, a New York qualification would definitely open more opportunities for you in the future. Bear in mind that New York is the largest and most profitable legal market in the world by quite a significant distance. Moreover, a majority of the high-end transactions, dispute or capital raising is based under the English law or the New York law. So definitely having a qualification in New York will help you with your future career. One last point I want to mention is that if you want to take the New York bar exam, uh, it will be better if you actually want to work for a US law firm in London, because uh, by having a qualification in New York, uh, you can tell the US law firm in London that your career trajectory more is more aligned with the firm's development strategies because most of the US law firms in London have a strong US presence so that I think it makes more sense for you to actually uh, do the New York bar exam if you actually want to work for a US law firm. Another thing that you may want to do if you graduate from college without a training contract is to be a paralegal. Probably the most common route that most graduate would choose if they haven't found a training contract after graduation. It is not uncommon that a paralegal would go on to secure a training contract at the same firm after paralegaling at that firm for a certain period of time. Well, it is not surprising because the kinds of skills and also the first-hand knowledge the candidate has acquired during the course of his role would definitely give him a significant advantage over other candidates who haven't actually worked there. Some legal recruitment agencies, they are pretty helpful uh, to actually uh, find the jobs that, uh, that are actually suitable for you. Sometimes you may also want to apply directly on the firm's website because some firms, they may not necessarily uh, ask other recruitment agents to advertise their roles. They may advertise it on their official website. There are also two more things I want to mention about uh, paralegal roles. If you have an option, I would say you should definitely choose an area of law that you're really interested in so that in the future training contract application, you could actually pitch your paralegal experience in that area of law as one of the reasons why you apply to that particular firm. Maybe because that firm also has a similar uh, practice area strength. And also another thing you would like to bear in mind is the kind of firm or type of firm that uh, you're working for. For example, if you secure a paralegal role at like Charles Smith, then in the future you may have a higher chance or you may have a stronger reason to apply to similar firms. For example, McFarland's because they have similar size and also similar international strategies, then you can actually justify the reason why you apply to that firm based on your paralegal experience at uh, another very similar firm. Last thing you want to do if you graduate from college, you couldn't find paralegal roles, and you don't have a training contract, is to be open to other opportunities. It's not the end of the world if you can't, you can't actually find any legal work experience. Some non-legal work experiences could also demonstrate the key skills required of a lawyer. Uh, experiences in other industries like banks, financial institutions or even charities will help you demonstrate your interest in a particular firm. Maybe that firm is working with that uh, industry or that may possibly be the firm's uh, focused sectors as well or you actually work with one of their clients. So I think at the end of the day, it's always good for you to be open to other opportunities because being a lawyer is not the only goal everyone has in their life. Uh, during the process of figuring out what other opportunities are, you may find that you may actually be more interested in other potential career paths so that it may actually lead you to other opportunities. So guys, these are basically the things that you might do if you graduate from college without a training contract or a job offer. When you're gonna graduate from college, you will feel super anxious because you don't know what is gonna happen. I really hope that this video can help. Maybe it couldn't help you get a job immediately, but I think 
it helps you and give you an idea that there's so many opportunities in life. Let me know what do you think about this video. I hope it's helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions regarding those uh, experience I mentioned, just leave a message below, uh, you know, or message me through LinkedIn. Really appreciate you guys' support uh, along the whole journey. Because uh, I was there, I knew how difficult it is to secure a training contract or to survive in the legal industry. So I hope all the videos I made in the past would actually help you achieve your goals as well. Because I think I'm a pretty lucky guy in terms of um, all my achievements in the past. And I hope that this luck could, you know, I could bring that the luck I have in the past to you guys as well. Let me know what you think. And yeah, this is the end of my video. And also recently I launched a new Instagram a page for uh, this channel. Actually, I call it the struggle, struggling lawyer. It's a bit weird because struggling is a pretty negative word, but actually I think it's a pretty positive word because when you're struggling, that means you actually have a goal in your life and you're actually pursuing that goal, even though it's a difficult path. So I think it's actually a positive word. So I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.